got to know as a uh, a warm, caring individual, but more importantly, he's a he's an he is truly uh, an expert when it comes to several categories. One, he's a uh, one of the top nutritional supplement copywriters in the world. Uh, number two, he owns and runs his own nutritional supplement company. And number three, so I don't know if you can hire him. When I say he's a copywriter, I, I probably can't hire him because he does his own does his own thing. And uh, number three, he's also one of the foremost experts in direct mail as it relates as it relates to nutritional supplement um, uh, businesses. So, I'd like to introduce my friend um, and also one of one of my instructors uh, and uh, a gentleman that I met through Gary Halbert. So I have many things to thank Gary Halbert for. Dan Gallopu. No, no overheads today. I, uh, Brock likes to say I'm, I'm an old school guy, which is kind of true. I tried cramming these papers in this slot on that Macintosh to get them up here on there, but it didn't work. So, um, <clears throat> I am Dan Gallup, who better known as Doberman Dan. Um, I met both Buck and Brock at, like they were saying, at Gary Halbert's Root Canal Seminar. Anyone want to hear some funny stories about your hosts? before we get started. So I got dirt on both of them, so now they're sweating. Um, so Brock came up. We were doing hot seats, if anybody knows what a hot seat is. You know, people come up from the seminar, participants, and they state whatever, you know, they'd like to improve in their business or problems they have to see if the panel can help them. So Brock comes up. Nobody knew who he was. And this young guy comes up there, and, and Gary starts grilling him about, you know, what are you doing, what are you selling, blah, 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 blah. You know, and Brock's saying, um, you know, I'd re my, I, I, I really need, I think my copy sucks. I really think I need better copy. And Gary's like, okay, well, tell me about your business. And he's like, well, you know, <clears throat> I think we're moving about, I think he said like 40,000, 50,000 bottles of product a month at 49.95. You could hear this collective hush over the audience, you know. <laughs> And I think Gary pretty much just sent him on, like, uh, keep doing what you're doing. So, <laughs> so <laughs> there wasn't much he could tell him. So I thought, I got to find out what this guy knows. So I kept calling him and emailing him, bugging him. And uh, he invited me down to his office. And, and he's like, yeah, I want to show you this stuff because my copy just really sucks. And it's horrible. You know, maybe you can help me. He said, I paid this copywriter. I won't mention his name, but he's a pretty famous copywriter. I paid him, like, it was like 35 or 40 grand or something to write a series of letters. And he's like, yeah, you know, this converted at X percent. I don't remember what it was. It was good. In, in my opinion, it was, you know, it was good. And I'm like, yeah, that's great, man. That guy's a great copywriter. He goes, yeah, my copy sucks, but here's, here's my copy. He hands me his copy. And he's pointing out everything that's wrong about it and needs improved. I'm like, well, <clears throat> okay, what did your copy convert at? And he's like, eh, like 27 percent you know it's like okay I keep writing that sucky copy <laughs> i'm thinking wow i hope my copy sucks that bad <laughs> and then uh <laughs> and then uh buck and i went to a seminar was it last year yeah in san diego i don't know if i should share this or not because oh, okay i'll go ahead and share it <laughs> well, so we're sitting next to each other, and this seminar was like a pitch fest. Every, every person that came up, you know, would speak on their topic, whatever it was. You know, like this guy, this speaker A is coming up to speak on how to use flying monkeys to increase your sales. You know, like, and they get you all hyped up, and they have PowerPoints like, with, ten, with only 10 flying monkeys, you know, and you can pay a minimum wage, you know, you're going to increase your sales. They get you all excited, and then like... Oh, look at the time, doggone it. I don't have time to get into telling you exactly how to use the flying monkeys, but then they start passing out the order forms. I have my flying monkey marketing course, and for a mere $2,500, you can buy that today. And anyway, every single speaker was like that. 
And they pass this stuff down, and I look at it, because I've... I'm in my frugal phase right now. And I look at it, pass it on to Buck, and he starts filling it out. He's, oh, man, this is good. I'm buying this. Next speaker comes up. Hey, I got a blah, 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 of course, blah, blah. It's, it's, it's only $5,000. They pass it on, pass my order form down to Buck. He's filling it out. I think, honest to God, every speaker who showed up that was pitching something, he bought their stuff. I'm and a oh, here's what I thought. I was happy. I thought, oh, man. I got my plan B right now. If When I fall on hard times again, all I have to do is every month, I'm going to develop a $5,000 info product, and I got a mailing list of one. Him. <laughs> <laughs> these guys are great, man. These, these two guys are some of the best marketing minds that I've had an opportunity to hang around. Friday night, um, we're, we're hanging out with Joanne, and talking about her menopause product. And a little earlier in the evening, I had introduced them to a brand new health tonic that um, increases creativity, gives you a feeling of relaxation. It's called a Long Island iced tea. <laughs> and so after several of those, like at first the ideas are really good and she was actually taking notes like, oh boy, this is great. And then it started going down real fast when he comes up with, I got it. This is how you're going to get publicity. We're going to come up with a, a spokesperson. It's going to be menopause woman. <laughs> we're going to put her in a superhero outfit. And then Michael Lovitch pipes in, yeah, and her secret weapon, her, her special weapon is going to be this gun she shoots you with, and it gives you mood swings and hot flashes. <laughs> like, oh, my God. The, and these you're are, laughing now. <laughs> <laughs> and these are the guys you're learning from. <laughs> No, I, uh, the title of my talk today is How to Double Your Sales in 59 Days or Less. Can I have a show of hands? How many people actively have a business right now, either online or, or through direct mail or whatever, magazine ads? Okay. Okay, so how, who would be interested? Those who don't, who are still in process of getting your business together, would you still be interested in learning how to double your sales in 59 days or less? Okay. Well, let me give you an example. The stuff they're teaching is awesome. And um, most internet marketers, you're not going to learn this, this stuff that you're learning from these guys. Because most internet marketers that I seem to see online are really stuck in a box. All they focus on is the internet. And the internet is, the internet is not a business. The internet is a medium. And it's a good medium. I started back before the internet was the World Wide Web. I didn't even know what it was. I had to start the old-fashioned way um, with magazine ads, newspaper ads, direct mail. You know, run an ad in a magazine, wait three months to see if it's even going to work. And so the internet is, is a great medium, but it's only one media. If you're successful on the web, then, well, like Gary Halbert told me. Gary Halbert, I had got seduced by the web back in early 2000 and kind of had abandoned my offline stuff, and, uh, which was a monumental mistake. But Gary Halbert asked me, well, what, what are you doing online? I told him how much a month I was selling. He said, well, you're, you're, <laughs> is anybody, does anybody know who Gary Howard is? There's a multi-million dollar direct marketing uh, information at thegaryhalbertletter.com. Uh, like like uh, Buck was saying, he was recognized as probably one of the, the most successful copywriters ever. But all his newsletters that he used to charge for are now online for free. But Gary was fond of calling his subscribers... It was a term of endearment, but he was, <laughs> will I get beefed out? Will I get bleeped out? He was fond of calling his subscribers shit weasels. And so he tells us, yeah, I'm just, he's like, well, what about your offline stuff? How you doing on the, I dropped it. He goes, you're direct me? Yeah, I dropped it. All right, so tell me what you're doing online. I told him, he goes, you're a shit weasel. He said, you could probably add a zero to that if you'd start using offline stuff. It's working online, now you just need to take it offline, exactly what uh, Brock was saying earlier today. But uh, that's one thing that I found most internet marketers are stuck in a box. 
I, in fact, I asked one of the biggest sellers of nutritional supplements in the bodybuilding sports nutrition market. Um, they, they asked, they, they basically wanted to hire me to do a consulting gig. And, um, and I told, th these guys are doing tens of millions of dollars a month. And I said, I'll double your sales in less than two months. I'm like, how are you going to do that? I said, well, uh, I passed them my napkin. I said, here's my consulting fee. As soon as I get that check, and as soon as it clears the bank, I'll be glad to disclose that information. But uh, I decided not to take the gig. And so I gave, them, I gave them the secret for free. And the secret was, send a direct mail pitch to your customer list. And they said, well, why? So because it's going to at least double your sales. I'm like, well, but we send email. You don't get it, do you? Email. How many people subscribe to e-zines? They want to get the e-zine. They've double opted in. It's something they want to, but yet they delete that email unread. Maybe not every time. Does that happen? We got 200 messages in your box. Are you deleting emails unread? That's what's happened. The emails that make it past the spam filters, you're delusional if you think your customers or prospects are waiting with bated breath to get your email to open it up. No, first of all, a small a percentage are getting through and a large percentage are getting deleted. But still, a snail mail letter in the mail is, is a lot harder to ignore than an email. And if you have something that's successful sent, sent out by email, more than likely, you have to test it, but more than likely it will be even more successful by direct mail. So I tell these guys that and their response was, um, we don't keep a database of our customers' snail mails. Let, let me put it to you this way. Um, who, who says they have a, a business going right now? Okay. What's your name? Yeah. Kim. Okay. So I'm going to give Kim a gift. I'm going to give Kim a magic table. Okay. Here's the deal with this magic table. Every month on the first of the month, there's going to magically appear $100,000 in coins, okay? But Kim is only going to take $50,000 of coins off the table. The deal is, if she doesn't take all those coins off the table in 24 hours, whatever she leaves is going to disappear. So she calls me and says, yeah, magic table's awesome. $100,000 in gold coins appeared, uh, just like you said. I, well, what'd you do? She says, I took $50,000 of coins off. So you left the other $50,000 in coins on the table. Yeah, and they disappeared. Okay, well, all right. I tried to tell you about that. That's okay. Next month, another hundred grand in gold coins is going to appear. So the next month, again, the gold coins appear. She takes half off, leaves the other half on. Every month she does that. What would you think about Kim? <laughs> Exactly. I'm not going to say the word again, but that's what Gary would call her. And based on my experience, if you're not sending at least monthly a direct mail pitch, I'm talking good old-fashioned paper and ink, hold it in your hand, delivered by the United States Postal Service promotion to your list of past buyers, you're leaving at least 50% of your sales on the table every single month. And if you think I'm making this stuff up, let me tell you, there's a, there's a study done by an organization called the International Communications Research Organization. It's, it's a highly respected study amongst direct marketers. These are the big direct marketers like Agora, Philips, Boardroom, who mail tens of millions of pieces of direct mail a month. And this is what they found out. 73% uh, of the consumer market prefers mail for receiving new product and service announcements, promotions, offers, and other information from companies that they do business with versus 18% who prefer receiving the same content by email. Uh, they also found for confidential information such as invoices, statements, bank statements, financial reports, the preference is 86% mail, only 10% email. 
Another point, 70% prefer mail. When I say mail, I'm talking about good old-fashioned snail mail. Prefer mail for receiving information from companies they are not currently doing business with. And below 10% prefer email for receiving information from companies they are not currently doing business with. Only 31% of consumers say they frequently discard mail unopened. That's mail identified as commercial mail, that they discard it unopened. But 53.2% say they frequently delete such email unopened. Um, the reasons for preferring mail, 45.3% say it's less intrusive, it doesn't interrupt their other activities. 40% say it's more convenient, can easily be saved uh, to read at other times. 30% say it's less high pressured, lets them arrive at a decision intelligently. 22% says it's descriptive, more descriptive, provides better information. The bottom line is your customers prefer receiving that information via direct mail. So if you only email, you're, you're, you're kicking against the goads, if any it's a biblical statement. Uh, and compared to email, now it depends. AWeber and these, these email services, a lot of them have really good deliverability, but the United States Postal Service has really gotten a lot better in their deliver, deliverability issues. For example, let's say you send 1,000 pieces. Worst case scenario, 900 pieces arrive. And if we go by this survey, 31% probably get discarded unopened, but that still leaves you with 621 direct mail pitches that have a shot in making a sale. Um, this is a, a statistic from Dan Kennedy, but he was talking about with some of his clients, they're getting only 20% deliverability rate of their emails. And so he said, if you send out 1,000 emails, only 200 are delivered. Based on the survey, 53% are deleted unopened. That only leaves even 94 emails with a shot at, at uh, making a sale. So which do you think has better odds? 621 in the mail or whatever it was, 94 via email. So if you're only sending an email, you're missing a lot, of, a lot of your customers. Here's another argument for it. The political fundraising people who pretty much money is no object on, on the media that they buy and use, they dedicate a majority of their money to direct mail. In fact, this year they will dedicate more than one billion dollars with a B to direct mail. And so they asked him why. And uh, one of the top guys at, uh, it's called Campaigns and Elections, it's a, it's a company that does uh, media buys and, and, and basically does stuff for, for political promotions. He says the use of direct mail will grow based on the ability to micro-target. Micro-targeting is with a list of customers or with a rented list, you can get information, uh, psychographic, demographic Im uh, information about your customers, uh, which is actually pretty detailed. Their, their preferences, their beliefs, um, emotions, religious background, political background. You can customize everything in your direct mail promotion to those, to those people. Um, you can write a different pitch customized to, uh, based on those, on those factors um, when you micro-target a list. Can I ask a favor? I, every time I see like, somebody speak and they go over and take a drink of water, it's always really awkward for me because the, the crowd just stands there and stares. And all you hear, you hear you know, there's the, that uncomfortable pause and there's a glug, glug, glug. When I take a drink, could I just ask a favor? Could you all just start saying yada, 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 yada? <laughs> let's, let's, let's try it right now because I want to take a drink. Okay, great. Plus, if, if I have like a, a moment, a little brain fart, and I, I, I can't remember what to say instead of me standing here staring and it's that awkward <laughs> silence, I'm just going to walk over here and, and you're going to do what? Okay, great, thanks. Um, one, one thing I like about direct mail, too, is uh, I like 
you can stay under the radar with it. As soon as you have a successful website, or as soon as you start rolling out in newspapers or magazines, you are immediately going to get knocked off by somebody. You know what I mean when I say knocked off? Somebody's going to buy your product, some knockoff artist is going to buy your product, they're going to knock off your formula, they're going to basically knock off your promotion, they're going to know that you run in these particular magazines or these particular newspapers, they're going to start running their ads in those exact same publications. Now, they may get less of a response than you, but it's going to happen. And, uh, and plus, a successful ad or a successful website, especially in the magazines or newspapers, is also going to bring you to the attention of the various alphabet agencies. Those are the FTC, FDA, uh, FBI, PCP, uh, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know, ATF, IRS, all those alphabet agencies. I don't remember who they are. You, but with direct mail, you can be mailing millions per month. And, and, and nobody even know who you are. The knockoff artists more than likely aren't going to find you. More than likely, it's going to be a lot harder for the alphabet agencies to even know what you're doing. I know people mailing millions of pieces a month making millions of dollars, nobody's ever heard of them. They're, they're former subscribers to Gary Howard's letter that started a business on their kitchen table just like he taught, and, and they're million, mailing millions of pieces a month. And uh, when a direct mail pitch arrives, there's less distractions. Your email arrives on a computer. Your, your website's on a computer. The computer is a portal to so many distractions. Your email that arrived number 208. The, the 207 is a link to a site with, with hot women. So, you know, <laughs> they click on 207 and forget about 208 and delete it. Or your website, there's, there's, there's hot women there too that they can, you know, be distracted by. But, an, but a snail mail letter, direct mail pitch, there's no distractions there, especially if you do it a pile, B pile. Um, if you know what that is, Gary Howard used to teach that uh, for deliverability and getting your message read, it's, uh, it's always best to make your, your mail look like what he calls a pile mail. When you get a letter from your aunt, um, it, it isn't inkjet print, well, Maybe nowadays it is, but <laughs> normally it is an inkjet printed with, uh, instead of a stamp, an indicia with copy on the outside that says, hey, exciting letter from your aunt inside about her vacation to Maui. Open up now. <laughs> and, you know, it's hand addressed. It's, it's got her return address in the corner card. It's hand addressed to you. It's got a regular stamp on it. So Gary used to teach to get your letter open, Make it look like a pile mail. A pile mail is bills, checks, personal mail. B pile mail is mail that is obviously commercial in nature. And if you've ever had a post office box, you see people sort their mail over the wastebasket and start pitching all the commercial mail. So if you send a pile mail, many times your, your uh, deliverability rate, opening rate, attention to that letter, is, can be even better than, than email. Um, let's, talk about, let's, start, let's talk about getting started with direct mail. It's actually really simple. Um, just a few years ago, in fact, I've got an example. This doesn't have to be complicated. You've got a list of past buyers, mail them a sales pitch for, for a product, for a back-end product. Or mail them a sales pitch, you get, hey, I noticed you bought uh, a month ago. Would you be interested in buying that same product again? You might be getting low. It doesn't have to be complicated. You don't have to, to get in all the fancy stuff that we talked about. It's a simple uh, me-to-you sales pitch. Um, what finally made me realize Gary was right is a few years ago when I had moved back to the States, uh, I was completely broke in December sitting on an air mattress in an apartment in Miami <laughs> and uh, was wondering if I was going to even have money to make the bills. I had a customer list from a business I'd been ignoring 
while I was doing all this freelance work. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to send a direct mail pitch for a product in the worst month to send direct mail December. Because that's my back was against the wall. This is what I need to do. So I sent it to the printer. It was an ugly sales letter. Um, it was, you know what, it, the copy was really half-assed. Yes, you can make, you don't need a $15,000 copywriter to make money. The copy, it was really half-assed, cranked out. Um, and me and my wife sat on the floor <laughs> and addressed the envelopes, followed them, stuffed a thousand in. I dropped them with the post office and prayed. And the response came back was amazing because it's a list of people. They know you, they trust you, they've already bought from you. So now they're getting a letter from you. They already have this connection with you. And the response had just blew me away. So I sat down and figured it out and, and figured out, wow, over the past five years, by not sending dire direct mail promotions every month to this little list I had of just a couple thousand people of business I had been ignoring, I had cheated myself of about $100,000 a year in extra sales. This is from a little side business. I've been sold on it ever since. And I'm, I'm on a crusade. I don't, I, now that Gary's passed away, I don't know of anybody that, that is teaching this anymore. Do you? I'm on a crusade. Sometimes I feel like I'm beating my head against the wall. Yeah, email's great. But honest to God, you're leaving 50% of your money on the table every month by not sending a direct mail pitch to your customer list. Yeah, mo most people are just, that are doing it are just quietly doing it and not sharing it. That, that is true. These guys know about it. They're doing it. They are sharing it. But some really big direct marketers are doing it, but they don't want to let the secret out. It, it is literally the secret to doubling your sales in 59 days or less. That's a lie. Actually, it will probably be in 30 days or less. It'll probably be in two weeks after sending your letter. Um, I've got... Can, do you want me to pass out the letter that I sent when I was broke with no furniture? I'm not sure that they want, um, they got a lot to carry home. Okay, forget it. <laughs> this, this is a, yeah, let's, let's hand those out. Amor, queris pasar la promoción a cada mesa, por favor? Que? I said, hey, gringo. Uh, I, this is here to show you, I am, uh, I'm not too proud to show you copy that sucks. There are, so, there are so many things wrong with this piece of copy that I would never do this today. Um, but like I said, my back was against the wall and I cranked something out fast. And this was the copy I sent out when I was broke, sitting on a floor in Miami with no furniture and no money to pay my rent. This is what I said. It was even uglier than what you're getting now. It was on goldenrod paper because the printer gave me a discount on it because he wanted to get rid of it. It was so ugly. Um, so if I'm going to be around, I've got I to gotta cut, it, cut it off now, but I'm going to be around all night tonight. Um, I am here to serve. I do not, I no longer take consulting or copywriting clients. You, can't, you cannot hire me. I have nothing to sell. I'm, I am here. Um, thank you. <laughs> I mean, All right, get I, off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wait. I'm sorry. I have nothing to sell to you. I do have an order form specifically for Buck, though. For, uh, <laughs> no, I, I'm I'm here to serve. I don't exactly know how I can do that. You can better tell me. But I'll be available all evening if I can help you with your copy. If I can help you, you know, strategizing for getting your direct mail going. That's what I'm here for. The only thing I ask is. Um, I started a website initially a couple years ago to try to get more clients, but like I said, I'm no longer for hire, at DobermanDan.com, um, D-O-B-E-R-M-A-N-D-A-N.com. And there's articles up there about direct mail and, and offline advertising. I, I also have nothing to sell at that website. I'm merely trying to just pick up the ball where Gary Howard left off and, and be the kitchen table entrepreneur's best friend. But um, I think you'll get more information from the newsletters there about direct mail. And I do have a special gift for you guys. I didn't get time to talk about it, but I, I also know a lot about um, space ads, magazine ads, and newspaper ads. 
And I can guarantee you can probably buy ad space for 10% of rate card. Rate card is what they normally charge. If a magazine tells you they'll sell you an ad for $10,000, I can guarantee more or less, not 100%. You can probably get it for $1,000. Um, and there's a lot of tricks, but so, most of my tricks are in this little ad script that you can download for free at dobermandan.com forward slash ad script dot pdf. So that's just a free little gift for these guys. Can we post it on the resources section? Okay. Can we post that on okay. our resources section? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, on the resource section. Yeah, where is it? At www.supplementmillionslive.com <laughs> forward slash resources. I, do we have time for questions? Or questions? Let's take a couple questions and then, yeah. okay. Wow, this is, you're, you were hot, man. Hold on a second. Thank you. Get there with the mic. Oh, great. When you're mailing to your uh, customer list, does, can it be simple, just black and white, or do you need glossy brochures and stuff? Or? I, you know what? Um, Initially, I would keep it simple. Black and white is fine. Um, you know what? I've, those are, again, things that whisper and things that scream. Glossy paper, color paper, you know, in my, based on my experience, is not going to make a big difference in your response, especially because you're mailing to your list. They already have an affinity with you. They know who you are. You know, to be honest with you, the list is the most important thing in your direct mail offer. You can scribble your offer on a, on, on a piece of, three yeah, three by five card in crayon. And if it matches the list, if it's what the list wants and it's the right offer to the right list, they're going to buy. What about customization? Like, dear friend, how much more response have you gotten from dear first name? It's, it's going to depend. It's, it's, you have to test it, but my experience has been um, customization in the salutation does increase response, sometimes pretty significantly. What I've found works even better, customization in the headline. Uh, when you insert you know, your, your customer's name in the headline, here's how, I'm sorry, I forget your last name, but here's how Josh, your last name, <laughs> uh, can gain blah, blah, blah. And I've seen that increase response up to 30% over just a generic sales letter. Here's how you can gain blah, blah, blah. That was actually one of the uh, tricks that Gary employed in his infamous letter, right? The coat of arms mailing. It, it was customization right. back in the 60s and 70s. Before it was even right. a computer could even do it. This is great. Um, could part of this be that whenever somebody comes to a website, you're going to have to ask for their address and city and state. Uh, so that's why so much internet marketers don't do that because it could impact your opt-in or sign-up. I, I like what these guys are doing. Um, at least on the Nitrim page, you capture not just the email, but the snail mail address too, right? right. Enter your information, get your free bottle, okay? We have a 40, uh, 47% um, go to the next page. It might be higher than that now. It's a 47% opt-in rate uh, here's, on that page. Here's a little trick. If you just have a list of emails, you don't have your easy and subscribers, you, know, you don't have their snail mail addresses, a, a snail mail address to me is infinitely more valuable than an email address. Here's how to get the snail mail address. Prepare a special report in paper and sent out emails. I've got a special report on the, you're going to learn these, discover these hot topics, blah, blah, blah. But I can, for various reasons, make up a reason, <laughs> I can only send it out via snail mail. So you have to e email me your snail mail address. Then from that list you can capture snail mails and, and add them to your list that you're going to mail every month. When I met Dan at the seminar, he's actually the one that told me to do this. And all I did was say, I'm going to send you a secret, you know, a special report called "How a Secret Discovery in Malaysia," and it was basically it was my sales letter, it was my report, and I started mailing it out, and it helped. Um, and I did it with Caleb. Oh, did you really? Yeah, and it was we just started mailing it to our list, and it was it was huge the report. But, uh, <laughs>
We just did it just like this. Um, cool. You know, nothing fancy, and it did phenomenal. So hey, Brock, can you grab the, the mic? So you're, you're Dan, now that you uh, revealed your secret identity, <laughs> tell me about the Spanish market. I mean, what do you know about direct mail to that, to that uh, specific population? I've never tried it. I've, I've just started looking into it. Um, it's a terrible market. You shouldn't market to Hispanics. <laughs> yeah, the, those Latinos are so cheap. No, I'm just, I'm kidding. I am married to this beautiful woman in the back of the room who's from Colombia, South America. That's why I'm joking about Latinos. Um, Yeah, 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 that's right. Thank you. Don't go into the Spanish speaking market. Please let me do it. No, um, I'm j you know what? I'll, um, if you, if you email me, I'll keep you up to date on what I'm learning about it. I I'm just looking into it. A lot of big mailers are having a lot of success with bilingual mailers, English and Spanish in the same, in the same direct mail, in the same envelope. Yeah. Do one more question. Do one more. Okay. Dan, I'm wondering if you've ever used a postcard to your, your database um, or your buyer's list and then direct them back to a long copy sales page. I, I have, no, I have not personally done it. I know people who have, and um, it's good. It can work. The, the one thing I warn you about, because the postcard is going to be cheaper to mail, the, the death of a sale is delay. And... In almost all of my direct mail pitches, there is only one response device. Because I've tested this. People over the past 50 years have tested this. The phone-only option almost outpulls everything. You can offer three. Contact us by phone, by mail, uh, by fax. Phone-only will always outpull. Um, the reason why is if you send out a mailing, you can contact. You're interested? Go to this website. That can be put aside sometimes. Oh, okay, there's a website in I'll check that out later. And delays the death of a sale. With a phone only option, it's more immediate. But you gotta test it too. Don't don't take that as gospel. You gotta, you gotta test it too. I've had a lot of success with postcards, but I've not done that. The response device has always been call this toll free number to request your free report. Dan, this is a uh... I have found Dan to be one of the most caring and sharing individuals, and uh, like, like that he's, you can't hire him, and there's nothing you can buy from him right now. So, you know, uh, take advantage. Like, he's another one of our stealth operatives that have been operating out there before coming up on stage. So, Dan, fantastic job. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I want to. Oh, oh. oh, one, 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 one more. Yeah, really. <laughs> Just one more quick thing. While he's doing that, I do want to, you know, while I'm on camera and stuff, to say Dan is full of crap. <laughs> <laughs> this letter is awesome. No, it really is. It's really good.